I'm Giovanni. Uh, this is my colleague. Uh, so I will be presenting this. Uh, okay, hello everyone. Um, yeah, state of Geonode. Um, Geonode, okay, uh, I'm from GeoSolutions, a company that works on Geonode as core developers. Uh, not only on Geonode, but in this context, I'm presenting Geonode. And um, so, what's Geonode? I mean, I don't spend too much time explaining what's Geonode because it's about what's new in Geonode today. But um, this question came a lot of times past year when we decided to redesign Geonode from, I would say, from scratch in many ways. Uh, because Geonode is a project that um, is coming from, well, it has 12 years now, 13 years, with which passed many hands and many developers and many things piled up into Geonode. So Geonode was becoming uh, too much crowded uh, with, with a lot of features that, um, with a lot of functionality that was becoming not easy to understand, explain, manage, because it did too many things and uh, with some cluttering. Uh, so what's Geonode? Uh, we asked ourselves uh, last year. And um, well, Geonode is basically both a product, but also we want to make it a framework to build your special applications. So it's an end user product. Uh, but also it wants to integrate easily into uh, services, uh, third-party services, and provide what we said actionable uh, catalog data. So mm, data that is, uh, well, its main focus is not the catalog services, although it provides catalog services and standard catalog services, but we wanted to uh, push more on the side of making data easily uh, available uh, to applications, custom applications, also th external applications. So um, the driving forces uh, were from one side make Geonode easy, easier for users to use uh, with reducing a lot the steps to make things and uh, the complexity and so make everything or most, most important things one click away we say. And on the other side, we wanted to uh, improve all the REST APIs and everything on the back end uh, to easily adopt it into even wider contexts. So, uh, well, I won't go through all the capabilities that uh, I, I guess m many of you already know. It's a catalog that pro that uh, make possible to create a catalog of um, core data, so documents and uh, special data sets, and build applications or visualizations on top of this data, so thematic maps, dashboards, geo stories, and on the other side, provide uh, standard OGC services and CSW services with on this data. Uh, so, two-headed, okay, uh, application mainly. Uh, so you get locker files, remote files, remote services. You get it, documents and data sets. These are the two main type of data that Geonode handle. From these two type of data set, you build maps, just stores, dashboards, or your own geo apps. So we, we, we worked to make it easier to build your own application inside Geonode uh, with your custom models and so on. And then you get from all the core application types and your custom applications, OGC services, REST API, and HTML viewers inside the core client, so the general client, or outside of it as embedded, embeddable content in your third-party websites, whatever. So basically, this is, this is the flow, okay? Um, yeah, it is also a, best, a web framework, which is based on Python and Django, so Python and JavaScript, because it's half and half. Python and JavaScript mainly, but of course, uh, uh, the top part is Geonode itself, but it's the Geonode as a stack of services, the complete application when you deploy it is composed also of third part other services, GeoServer, PyCSW, and uh, PostGIS, Postgres, and other services. 
So I will move fast. Uh, well, currently we have we are at version 4.0. We released version 4.0 in the beginning of August, so it's the first stable version of the refactoring that uh, we did. Uh, so currently we have three versions in parallel, but 3.2.3 three three is uh, deadline, <laughs> so at end of, um, end of life. So 3.2 three three two is not supported anymore. 3.3 three three is the current, let's say, long-term uh, version, which will end, the end of life of 3.3 .3 is the end of this year, so December. And uh, 4.0, will actually become the new uh, long-term version. So we will keep the 4.0 for a long time with 4.0 minor releases, where we do mainly back, backport and back fixing and so on, and new, uh, and new features that we are already working on will, hand, will land into new majors of 4.1 that will happen in a few weeks, probably the first 4.1, a few months. So 4.0 is the reference implement the reference uh, version at the moment, and of course uh, we cannot afford uh, keeping three major versions. Uh, it's too much because there are re huge differences between them in the core, so uh, it's becoming hard and harder to to maintain them. So that's why we are. Uh, moving to the end of cycle, so for most of the three. You have three online demos that you can play. They are full-featured demos, so you can register and play with that, upload data, and create applications. Uh, the master is the current development version. 4.0x is the current 4.0 branch, so is the one that is more similar to the 4.0 that you have, uh, that we have released. And the 3.3 is, okay, the past version. So from the point of view, well, I, I would divide the news between what, what changes for users and what changes for developers or system integrations, and so on, system integrators. So from the point of view of the user interface, we dropped a lot of things. Uh, we decided to declutter uh, the UI, simplify, remove overlaps, remove functionality that, I mean, from our feedbacks were not so important and it was heavy to be maintained. So we decided to uh, make a, a big, huge cleanup, uh, refactor the client completely. Now the client is based on uh, uh, MapStore framework, uh, which is a JavaScript React framework. Um, which under the hood uses open layers and leaflet and so on, Cesium, JS. Uh, also, we improve the mobile version of uh, the UI. And yeah, um, if some one of you knows the, um, the version three, you know you have a landing page and you have to click at least four or five, put, do four or five clicks to reach the preview of a, of a, of a resource, or, or a full view of a resource. Now, everything is, I mean, we put most of the functionality into a single page application. We have a single page application for the main catalog, uh, where you have access to uh, an infinite scroll of, uh, of resources. By, by default, you have everything, I mean, sorted by date, creation date. So you have everything in the catalog in a single view. You can scroll it. Uh, at the same time, you can filter, so with facets, let's say. Filter is completely configurable. So everything that you see here was designed to be, uh, to be adapted, changed, configured for custom uh, uh, applications. So you can customize the filters, you can customize the placement of things, you can customize colors, brands, and so on. You will see. So in the single view, with a few clicks, you get filtering for... Um, for, um, you get inline previews, live previews of the data. So you just click and you keep clicking. So without having to move to the preview page and go back to the to the catalog. So you can 
like a Google search, no? you just move around. Um, you can have a list view. So it can become a personal workspace because you can filter by your own resources. So if you see this like a, your, your workspace, yeah, it's also your workspace. So it can be many things, this single page. It been, it's been optimized for the mobile. So we removed some feature, some functionality for the mobile because they don't make sense. So we, 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 we make a lightweight version. And we have integrated viewers. So when you have you are in the home page and you click view, you go straight to the to the view of the data set or the document with the full page preview, either if it's a document or a map or a data set. You have the main information, so the main metadata on the side uh, with few information, and then you can expand it and get the full list. So here you have the, the, the and uh, all, the, all the tools, all the actions that you can do on these uh, resources are on the, on the top bar, so without having all these things spread uh, as it was before. Of course, everything depends on your permissions on these resources. Uh, we have improved the styling of the Matic Maximum layers, so you have an, in an integrated style editor, which is quite advanced. It's based on the SLD and the advanced, and the specific SLD extensions that we that just have provide. Uh, the metadata editor has been improved also. Uh, we have a wizard version which just offers the minimum set of information that probably most users will enter. Um, so it, it's easy to go through and get the bar, the green bar saying if you if the minimum expected information is filled or not. You are not blocked. You are not forced to in, to enter everything, but if you have the green light, it means that your metadata is at least a Dublin core compliant. Um, we have improved the Tesauri. Uh, well, I'm not going too deep in this, but we have improved the, uh, the, the model of the metadata model to let you uh, extend the data models easily for the metadata. So you can, for example, adapt or extend the metadata model to adapt it to data site, to whatever, uh, so whatever model you have behind, model schema for the meta metadata. And uh, we also extended the DOI support, but I won't, won't say more on this. So upload is easier now, it's much, much more, there was a lot of options before, now it doesn't have any option. You just drag your file on the sidebar, click upload, and you're done. So we support shapefiles, GeoJSON, um, geo packages in a few weeks, full geo packages. We have testing three gigabytes, four gigabytes of geo packages with, hand, with the dozens of layers, everything imported in batch, uh, rasters, and documents, and so on. You have the permission system is completely changed. There was a lot of permissions before. You had to understand what each permission meant, and you assigned users to that permissions. Now it's reverted. Now you have the list of users and you simply say if you can, if the user or the group can view, edit, manage. So three permissions which group together all the fine-grained permissions that we had before. And you also have, well, yeah, geofencing. So the ability to set permissions by special extents. Uh, dashboards have been improved because we are leveraging the map store framework which provides dashboards so as map store provides new widgets uh, to the dashboards also do not get these new widgets and the geo stories so also the geo stories have been improved also with a with a new sync mechanism that lets you uh, the, the geo store in the dashboard the applications are is a freeze version of the data that you used when you created them so if you want to update them afterward because you changed the backend data, so the data set, you the style in the data set, and so on, you can synchronize these applications and they will pull the new versions. So the main, fo oh, yeah. And another big uh, addition is the QGIS plugin. The QGIS plugin uh, pulls 
takes information from any Geonode instance through the Geonode REST API. So you can search it, search for rasters and, and vectors. If you, if it, depending on the permissions, because it has authentication, OAuth 2 or basic auth, you can uh, pull only the image, so the WMS service, or you can pull also the WFS, use the WFS and the WCS services to get the data, and so work on the data on QGIS and commit the changes directly to Geonode. So data editing or style editing. So you can also style your data in QGIS and then commit your styles to Geonode or create new data sets from QGIS. You have your vector layer and you just upload it to Geonode from QGIS. Uh, we also introduced harvesters. Harvesters is a mechanism that lets you harvest from whatever source. So harvest the data either as references to the remote resource or if the harvesting supports it, you can also pull the data, so clone the data locally. We have harvesters for WMS services, for RGS, RGS REST services, for other Geonode instances. Uh, soon we will have a harvester for standard CSW services, so you can schedule and define fine-grained uh, configurations for the harvesters. So what you want to pull, how much frequently, uh, filtering by um, strings or type of data sets. He will take this data from remote and update the local metadata information inside your Geonode instance. So it can be used to become sort of a hub. A Geonode can be a hub of many Geonodes or other WMS services. So, Stefan, there's a lot. I mean, the documentation says everything. And re the, all the remote services, something similar was available also before. The remote services is just a, now a thin layer on top of the harvester. So it's a simplified version, simplified view and configuration of the harvester. For integration, for external system, we worked with a fully new REST API based on Django REST framework. Uh, before we had only a get, a, 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 read-only API, basically. Now we have a crude red, uh, REST API based on permissions, on security, a strong security uh, management, uh, where you can manage uh, almost everything in your node. Even if you are an administrator, you can even execute management commands, which are commands provided by Geo that you generally do from the command line. You can also execute these commands from an API. So we opened up all the Geonode internals through its REST API. And soon in this week, we also create a new page on the documentation with examples of using this API for changing the resource, changing permissions, creating users, editing users, editing groups, whatever. So this was one of our goals, make Geonode even headless. So without a client, use it headless as a service provider and a data provider. So you, you can keep it on your backend side and just build things on top of, it, of its APIs. Yeah, this is, the API is completely documented also as uh, Open API 3, so Swagger, and so on. Uh, what's new for developers? And I'm done, yeah, one minute. Um, for developers, well, we have, make a hybrid application, so depending on front-end developers or back-end developers. For front-end developers, uh, the Geonode, we, we, we put a big effort to not make the client completely, a, single, a complete single page application uh, bundled in a single application, React application, which would uh, be hard for several community contributors or developers to uh, contribute to because uh, MapStore is complex, React, uh, I mean, nobody, not, not everyone wants to use React and so on. So we just used the, the single page application for the core features that we think that should be that way and it, that don't make much sense to be changed. Uh, you can configure colors, theming, but the functionality is there. But this applications that are inside you know they are hosted in a shell that is simply Django template, Django template pages 
which means they are just HTML pages that you can easily program on the back end uh, with, a, with a Django template system that we also knew from GeoNode 3. So we, don't, we didn't lose the ability to create custom pages, adapt or completely change your pages. So you can completely change, sorry, your, your oh, stop, okay. You can completely change the, the presentation of GeoNode but keep all the core client functionality or use it in your own places of the pages. And from the side of the backend, and I'm done, uh, we have extended the resource models and the geo app models to let you put all the things that you want to do, even trash. I mean, uh, 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 you have some blobs, some areas where you can put your JSON schema to uh, adapt the model of your resources to your needs, to your applications, and the REST API will be able to use those custom schemas, custom fields, uh, return them through the REST API. So, I mean, we, our, or our effort was to make it the most flexible as possible compared to the version three. That's all, I think. Uh, yeah, I won't say this. I say that. <laughs> so branding and theming, custom pages, and even custom client plugins, yes. We can create custom map store plugins without having to bundle them into the GeoNode client. You can just keep it in your projects, even your private repo, and then let the map store client pull those plugins and integrate into there. So, a lot of things, GeoNode 4. And uh, so if you're using all the version, please upgrade soon. <laughs> Uh, we are pushing forward to make all our clients upgrade their versions because soon we will, we will drop support for 3.3. Okay, thank you for your presentation.